they, they will use it against you if there isn't a consistent, organized effort behind it. Messages can't stand on their own. It has to come together. So, in this case, so they came up with enough is enough. That became their message. And they went door to door and they said, we already have a hazardous waste landfill. We've always already done our deed to society. Um, blah, 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 blah. Enough is enough. We have to stop this. And people came out. 500 people showed up at the next meeting. Why? Because they understood enough is enough. It wasn't going to devalue their property. They're not talking about poisoned property. It's not going to change their water. They, I mean, it, it was enough is enough. It was a it was a sort of cultural, you know, spirited, value driven message. Enough is enough, and you have that message here. Uh, by the way, enough is enough with this extractions and this thing and that thing, injection wells and industries that are out and dumping brine waste down the street and enough is enough. It's about time Mahoney County rose up from the ashes, rose up and did something positive. Enough is enough. Now would you come to a meeting if someone said that to you? Yeah. 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 Would you come to the meeting if I said come and learn about more injection wells? No. So, so this is what I'm trying to convey and this takes a long time and I understand you're not there yet. Um, and I'd be happy, and Teresa and I will be happy to help you get there. And, and, but you need to figure out, you've done this thing for four years. You've been organizing around injection wells and, and, and around earthquakes and around um, extraction wells. And you've tried the ballot initiative, you've tried other things. It hasn't worked. It's not going to work here. It might work somewhere else. It ain't working here. You have to face it. It's not working here. Four years later, it is not working. So, time to stop doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. Einstein. Einstein said that. He was weird too. <laughs> so, so, what you need to think about is how do you reform your campaign? How do you look at it as a way that you want Mahoney County, just for example, to rise up and become a place where our children do not leave to find work? where work is about small businesses and plentiful small businesses. It's not about getting another steel mill that's going to close down and put 10,000 people out of work. How do you figure that out? And you can figure that out, and it can be accomplished. You need to be about something, not just against everything. That is the key. And if you're bringing industry here, I mean, this could be a tourist area. This is a beautiful area. For hiking, for biking, for, I don't know, do you get enough snow? <laughs> I don't live in Buffalo anymore, I live in Virginia, but we had a lot of it this year. Um, so, you know, like, what, what is the alternative? That's, a, that's an industry that, even if it pollutes, it's, it's really not pollution in the manner in which you're used to here. You know, how do you turn those brown fields into green fields? There's grants programs out there. EPA has grants programs, real money for real counties and real government to do that. But you don't want the government to decide what to do because you know we're going to put another nasty there, right? You need to have some input in that. So, so essentially, my message for you is, first of all, stop reacting and start being proactive. If they tell you you can't speak, say, whose rule is that? Whose rule is that? It's not in the Constitution of the state. It's not in the Constitution of the United States. It's not in the Constitution anywhere. Therefore, this is a public meeting and I have a right to speak. And organize yourself in advance. And if they say you have to leave and they escort you out. I've been escorted out so many times. <laughs> and here's the good news about being escorted out. You don't have to sit there and listen to all that boring crap. <laughs> Go to jail, CD, you get a nap. Yeah. I have, the only time I get a nap is when I go to jail. Yeah. And it's, just, it's great. And if you're an organizer, they put you in your separate cell because they don't want you to organize the prisoners. So it's all good. It's all good. Right? Think, about, think about next meeting you go to to organize a different response that's unpredictable. In, in Georgia, these low-income African-American people Racism is alive and well, not just in Ferguson, but in this entire country, and especially in Georgia. 
So in Georgia, if the African American families spoke out, they got their tires cut. They got their houses burned. Yes, in 2014. See, honest got truth. So they were trying to figure out how could they speak out against this nasty that was coming into their neighborhood. And, and I'm like, I don't know, because I, I don't know. Let's explore. It took us two days to come up with a plan to, for this meeting that they were having, uh, a, a government hearing. And the plan was very simple, but it also was, they had to be very brave. They came, 250 of them came. That was a huge number. Um, they came to the hearing, and they all sat in the room. Now, you only get three minutes in the front or some goofy thing, and you had to sign up a week in advance, and you had to hop on one foot and scratch your head, whatever. Yeah, all those, right, all those details. Um, they just signed up one person, and it was a preacher. And this is the Bible Belt. And, and so when the preacher went up to the microphone where they, he was supposed to give his testimony, he turned to the audience and he started singing a Bible hymn. And when he's when in the South, when you sing a Bible hymn, everybody must stand up. <laughs> so the 250 people who came with him obviously stood up, but the company people had to stand up the lawyers had to stand up. The politicians had to stand up. And he didn't sing one verse, he sang three verses. And, and it was very powerful. And these folks left the, the, the hearing feeling empowered. And the governments wrote a rule for the next hearing, no Bible hymns. <laughs> so they're going to come up with something else. So, so you know, the thing is, like, they were, they were off kilter. They didn't know what to do afterwards. Once you knock them off track, they really are like a train. And once you do something that alters what they expect, then they say things that are really dumber than usual that you can use in the press. They don't know how to behave. They're afraid that at any point, these 250 African-American people are going to stand up again and we're all white in the front of the room and this is really scary shit, right? So it helps. So when you're thinking about going to these hearings, don't play by the rules. Think of a way to go in the hearing that's peaceful. I do not support violence at all, ever. But a peaceful way of bringing about your voices and being unpredictable. Yes, you still need three people in there to actually give the testimony that you want on the record and all that kind of stuff. But you all don't have to be there for that. Because you could do 45 letters that are all the same and they're not paying attention to one of them. So it doesn't matter. It honestly doesn't matter. All you, they do is count how many people put in letters. So you could have somebody deliver them for you. Don't play by the rules. Play outside the box. Knock them off of their little soft little place where they're controlling the agenda, and you can win. And think positive. Okay, I'm going to stop there, and then we should open it up for Q&A. And anybody who's locally here, let's go.